Hi, Claudio here. This is a short video since I'm working on a project that is taking more time than what I've initially planned for and uh, of which I will talk about in the next video. Uh, but this thing uh, actually has something to do with that, but it's a topic for uh, the next video. Uh, however, I had not enough time uh, and for this week uh, I've made only this short video that is inspired from an electronic conundrum uh, arising yesterday when on the factory floor a new batch of boards uh, having a minor change from a stable production uh, sported a problem indicating that something was wrong. One LED that should stay off when any push button is pressed, as you can see in the pictures, uh, on these pictures taken from uh, a unit uh, coming from the previous table batch. Uh, well, in the new batch, the LED works as expected when the push button are pressed, but still stays slightly lit even when no one of the push button is pressed. So that's how the problem started. Straight to the point, this is an except of the relevant part of the circuit, which is really simple indeed. It is just a PNP BC807 transistor which drives a load and an LID through a resistor. Since the base of the transistor should be at a positive battery voltage through the 4K7 resistor because no current would flow through the 680 ohm resistor and the connected Zener diodes because the push buttons are open and these diodes stop the current from flowing toward GND through the remaining part of the circuit the transistor should stay in a non-conductive condition and the LID should stay off. But measuring the voltage between the collector and GND gave 1.9 volt with 12 volt of power supply, thus the transistor was likely in conduction. Why this happened? Try to formulate your hypothesis in the comment section below. And before I go forward revealing what we found, I anticipate you that the transistor was ok and the problem appears identical in all the boards of the new batch. So what is your, your hypothesis? Right, right, please write in the comment section below. Time is running! Oh, well I have lost my watch, I don't care. In the meantime you uh, reach your um, conclusion, I tell you that we look at, at the possibility that the transistor, the transistor were an NPN instead of a PNP, because you know, uh, an allegedly wrong reel was, was inserted into the pick and place robot, uh, but Checking the markings on the component revealed that the transistor was actually a PNP and actually the intended BC807. And uh, uh, another thing uh, was to see if the PCB, uh, the PCBs was defective uh, with a short uh, somewhere and uh, that was not the case too. After having removed the 680 and 80 ohm resistor connected to the base of the transistor, uh, the situation was unchanged. So we also checked the cleanliness of the surface of the PCBs just in case any residue may be conductive uh, was left by, by the previous uh, working processes, you know, making a path. Uh, for the current uh, to bypass a bias or biasing uh, the transistor, but even that was not the case. So the transistor seemed to conduct slightly by themselves. Have you formulated your hypothesis on this electronic conundrum? As I've said before, uh, one of the first hypotheses was that the transistor were a NPN instead of a PNP. 
uh, a NPN transistor uh, would have had the reversed polarity, so it would have uh, had a leakage of current uh, across the emitter to the collector, but it would have not worked at all. Uh, um, but it is also possible that the NPN transistor had the pin reversed. In that case, it would have worked actually, but uh, also the base would be more positive than the emitter and it will conduct a certain amount of current. However, that was not the case because uh, we found it was actually a PNP BC807 transistor from ON semiconductors. And uh, while among many transistors you may find one that is faulty, the idea that a whole, ba whole batch of transistors were faulty is too extreme to be taken into consideration. Hmm, but now let's suppose the PNP had the collector emitter swapped. In that case, it would work uh, actually in some way, but it, was, it would be unable to hold the reverse voltage uh, across the whole collector base emitter junctions. Ha ha! A PNP transistor normally have a barrier of depleted charges between the emitter base junction and between the collector base junction, and it works uh, because Biasing the base, as shown in figure, holes or positive charges will go there recombining with the electrons in the base, reducing the depletion zone and reclaiming in turn more electrons that can only come from the collector, because, relatively to the base, the only source of electrons is there. And because biasing with a lower voltage relatively relative to the emitter means also injecting electrons into the base this will this will generate charges that will flow toward the emitter ultimately causing a larger current to flow from the collector toward the emitter making the transistor conducting current but what happen if we swap the emitter with the collector Actually, the structure is more or less the same and the transistor will work uh, roughly the same, but in this case the collector, that is less doped than the emitter, would see the electric field attracting holes into the base by diffusion, essentially creating the same situation seen before when we bias the base of the transistor with holes to make it conducting current. That is the explanation why the transistor was conducting slightly even with the base completely disconnected. A quick review of the schematic and of the PCB design comparing the layout provided by the manufacturer of the transistor given the confirm the package that comes with the Eagles Cut library for the transistor BC807 marked as SOT23BCE has the pin reversed. Well, the BCE in the label has probably something to do with that. The lesson is, uh, when designing a PCB, you should always check against the datasheet uh, with uh, what you have in your components uh, library, modifying it and uh, making your own copy in the case something doesn't match. Well, that's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if it is the case, please consider to like and share. Also, don't forget to leave your hypothesis, observation, correction, or just to say hi in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.